Hello again. Thought we'd take a look at the carrots. Uh, I had a rough time with carrots last year. I started them late. I just expected they would grow. I didn't bother thinning them out and as a result we got a really poor show. But uh, so far this year things seem to be going all right. Uh, these are a type called Yaya, which are an early Nant type and they're sweet but they will get sweeter after a first frost and these have been specially adapted for growth in coastal British Columbia but they should perform well throughout the whole of the Pacific Northwest. It's the first time we've grown these this year and these are top of the list for growing next year. These have been absolutely wonderful. And then behind the yeah, yeah, we have these, which are Imperator, and these are a standard carrot. I like to call these Bugs Bunny carrots because they look like the ones that you feed to rabbits. But uh, Imperator are a standard carrot type, they're grown all over the world, and so far this year, these have done well for us too. And this is the Recyclone, 20 carats of gold. And I got these going back in May. Um, the idea was that these cardboard tubes would keep the soil inside moist, but uh, it's not worked out that way. In fact, I think these tubes have actually drawn the moisture from the soil inside. And as a result, we've got these, which are, uh, what would you call it, a toothpick? <laughs> so anyway, I, I would probably, grow carrots in this container next year but I just wouldn't bother with these cardboard tubes. And in this tub at the back here we have a type called Neptune and these are another Imperator type and uh, they don't grow quite as long as the regular Imperators but they do grow a little bit fatter. Again, nothing to complain about. And these ones are our sweet candle carrots. Now, I'm not saying that I won't grow sweet candle carrots again. They are a nice carrot. But what I am saying is that I won't grow them again this way. Now, I've pulled a couple of these so far and they have been deformed and I actually want to leave these in for as long as I can maybe another couple of months yet yet but I'll uh, I'll pull a couple just to see what they look like and well a little bit deformed I guess now these are pushing themselves out the soil it's almost like they don't like the soil that they're growing in but uh, oh this one's broke off yep like I said though, it was deformed. The three parts, you know, maybe I'll pull one more, see what it's like, see if I can get it up without breaking it. Maybe it needs a twist. Oh, a little bit deformed, not too bad. You know, there is a lot of carrot there. There we go. You know, you cannot beat an amusingly shaped carrot. <laughs> I've heard it said time and time again that the reason carrots fork is because they hit a rock on the way down and whilst that might be possible it's highly improbable the main reason is usually because of too much nitrogen or it's found a food source on the way down a bit of manure or something and it's caused the root to branch out and go searching for that food ideally you want to be growing your carrots in a sandy loam if you want a long single root and you don't want to be putting too much manure down at the beginning of the season but uh, there's nothing wrong with these I mean these taste just like any other carrots and in fact when you look at that that's at least three of these from one single seed so not too bad at all 
Those of you that follow the channel will know that about a month or so ago I got a really bad attack of blight on my tomatoes and I had to destroy quite a few plants. Now the ones that were left I gave them a good dousing down with a solution of baking soda and vegetable oil and whether or not that actually works doesn't really matter. All I can say is since I applied that solution things have not got any worse at all. In fact they've only got better. Now I'm not suggesting that vegetable oil and baking soda is in any way a cure for blight, not at all. But what I am suggesting is that uh, it may well help in preventing infected plants transferring the blight to healthy ones. Now this is the first time I ever had blight and this was offered to me as a tip and from what I can see it's a pretty good tip. The total amount of plants that we lost to the blight was about 40% so we still have plenty of plants left and like everybody else at this time of year we are harvesting every day. And while we're on tomatoes I want to give these a mention. This is a type called Britain's Breakfast and they were sent to me from Steve, Digwell Green Fingers. Now I think I have six of these plants and not one of them succumbed to blight. So a big thumbs up for the Britain's Breakfast. And there we go, we're gonna make some pasta sauce. And you know what, when we got struck down by blight, we didn't think we were gonna get any, did we, Mrs. No, Coleman? No, I thought I'd get those two batches I already did, and that would be it. But you know what, I think we'll probably get as much as we did last year but it's still not going to be enough, is it? Nope. <laughs> that's okay, maybe next year. Okay, so we got three trays of stuff. That's the, what, last of the garlic there you've got? I've got a little bit more garlic I'm going to throw on top. I put some onions, shallots, peppers. I'm going to throw some herbs on top of this. A little bit of olive oil, salt, and pepper. What are you going to do with her? Are you going to shred the herbs or are you just no, going I'm to just, just drop them on and let them cook in? Scatter them on top. Well, let's do that then. They'll all turn brown and, and look horrible when you take them out but they'll be fine. Well, that's okay, we, uh, we're going to source it right or, right. or you know, um, it. um, and it's mainly for use for pasta, right? Yes. Wonderful, and so what are we going to, um, what temperature are we going to cook these at? About 350 for about an hour and a half. About 350 for an hour and a half, wow that long. Yeah, a long time, I want these to almost start sticking to the bottom. And that is little olive oil. Olive oil. We yeah. like olive oil as opposed to... Yeah, I know. It's I like lard. <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? Okay, so these are now ready for the oven. Yeah. Okay, I will open the oven for you. <clears throat> Don't say I never help. <laughs> Okay, so we're about an hour into this right now, and our things coming along there, Mrs. Coleman. They need to get a little softer, more sort of blister. See the edges there? They're getting nice and dark. Yeah. That's what we want to see, but like all over. Okay, okay. So how much longer? I think about another half an hour. Another half an hour? Yeah, sounds good. Okay, so we think these are about ready now. Yeah, they've been in almost two hours. You can see they're all blistery and. And that's how we like them, is it? Yeah, it's really nice. Okay. All that caramelization. Nice. So we'll let them sit here about half an hour. Half an hour? About half hour. Half an hour, and then we're going to throw them in the blitzer. <laughs> And there we go, a couple of bags of spaghetti or pasta sauce, the way we like it for the freezer. And normally we get through about 15 to 20 bags like this per year. 
Well that's about it for carrots, tomatoes and pasta sauce and right now I think it's time for a glass of wine. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment in the comment section below and if you haven't subscribed then ding the bell. But until next time, cheers Mrs Coleman. Cheers Mr Coleman. <laughs>